Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about what to do uh, immediately after a self-defense incident. Okay, so this is from the point where you're dealing with the attacker to the point that you're dealing with the police. Uh, and there's a whole thing, a bunch of things that might happen before that and a whole bunch of different things that might happen after that. But that, that focal point is usually going to be very similar in in lots of different cases okay um so the five things that we're going to be talking about today is number one reholster number two uh calling 911 number three preserving the evidence number four uh pointing out the witnesses to police and uh, number five shutting up and lawyering up okay so um we're going to be talking about some legal stuff now and the question first question is how do i know the legal stuff that i know well i have a prepaid legal service that I talk to quite regularly. And in fact, I go to their seminars and you're able to go to these same seminars uh, with a membership. And the membership is cheap. It's only $11 per month. So uh, the service that I use is US Law Shield, okay? Right, and membership is $11 per month with the promo code. Right, the promo code is Pocono Shooting. And in some cases, they give you like an, like two months free. In other cases, they they they, they waive the sign up fee, which I think is like thirty dollars. Uh, but uh, you gotta sign up through the website uslawshield.com. And if the promo code isn't working there in your state, uh, then use the app. Right, download the app on your phone, and then in the in the code field, put Pocono Shooting, and you will get some sort of discount. And again, for eleven dollars per month. Um, Basically, you have a lawyer on call. Three ways I use these guys. Number one, if I'm ever actually in a self-defense type of situation. Uh, number two, to ask them general gun questions. Uh, number three, if I'm traveling, I'll uh, you know with, with guns, I'll ask them for an itinerary. Okay, what, what states can I go to with my guns? Where can I carry? What states to avoid? So those are the these are gun specialists, right? These are because there's lots of lawyers out there, but a, a lawyer that specializes, let's say in um, you know, in, 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 in contract law, right? They're not going to be able to really help you with gun, a gun related uh, questions or gun related self defense. So, you want to have lawyers that specialize um, in, in, you know, helping people out in a self defense type of situation, especially if you're carrying a gun in one of these Democrat run states, Democrat run cities, okay? Because they're going to see you as a political enemy. So, uh, let's go through this list now of five things that we need to concern ourselves with uh, if we're in a self-defense type of situation. Uh, and, and just quickly going through the list one more time. Reholster, call 911, uh, preserve evidence, point out the witnesses, shut up and lawyer up. So let's talk about the first one, reholster. Okay, so uh, important to understand that uh, you don't want police showing up to the scene and seeing you holding a gun in your hand, okay? Uh, for that matter, you don't want other concealed carriers seeing you holding with a, a gun in your hand while you got somebody on the ground over there bleeding because they may not know what happened, what, what happened, and they may assume that you're the bad guy. So you want to get the gun back in the holster as quickly as possible, uh, and if it's not safe to immediately reholster, cover the gun up, right? Cover the gun up so it cannot be seen um, while you scan and assess. purpose of the scan and assess um, is so that, uh, first of all, you're scanning the area for additional threats. You're scanning to see where the witnesses are, okay, who they are. Um, and you're also scanning to break tunnel vision, okay? So we want to drill this so that it's automatic. You know, after we shoot, we cover up the gun, we scan and assess, we, we reholster. So we're using the scan and assess as a mechanism to kickstart our brain to do the next thing. Because the last thing we want to do is freeze, right? Where we just shoot somebody and we're just sitting there frozen, holding the gun out like this. Um, you know, that's going to get a shot. So we need some mechanism to kick off, to kickstart our brain to do the next thing. Okay, so the mechanism that I teach is the scan assess. There's other things that you can train in, right? But to me, it seems to make sense because you're actually, it gives you a chance to actually observe the area, you know, um, and it also breaks the tunnel vision, okay? Uh, I mean, I suppose you can drill, I don't know, scratching your chin or something to break, you know, but it doesn't make sense to do that. It makes sense to, why not scan and assess so that you actually see the area and you also have a mechanism now for breaking tunnel vision. So uh, let's do a, uh, a demonstration. I'm going to demonstrate two types of scenarios, okay? 
So when oh whoa, stop, stop. Okay, so that was a situation where I was surprised that the gun, you know, basically I determined that I needed to, to, to use the gun to, to defend myself. Fired my shots. After I fired my shots, right, I covered up the gun so it can't be seen. No, notice I'm pointing it down towards the ground, not at my feet, but not far enough out at other people. I basically scanned the area. First, I reholstered, and then I moved to a position of cover. You know, because basically... You want to get to cover. You don't want to be out in the open uh, because you know you don't know what's going on. Right? Maybe you, maybe there's something that you missed. Maybe there's additional threats out there. You know, get yourself behind cover as quickly as possible. Um, let me demonstrate a different type of scenario with that. Yo, yo, stop, stop! Don't do that. Get back, get back. So, situation there where I saw something developing, okay, um, basically I had a nice piece of cover there, a, a, a nice big tree, ran behind the tree and returned fire from behind the tree. Um, most people, especially most bad guys, are not very good at shooting a moving target. So, me standing still and trying to return fire, you know what, my chances of survival are probably better if I run behind a piece of cover, okay? Um, it, but so that's kind of a judgment call, because, you know, right now that tree over there, it's about 15, uh, about 15 feet away. If the tree was further, if it was like 30 feet away, you know, maybe that's not a good decision. Maybe 30 feet away is a little too far. So you have to make a decision as to what is the better thing to do. Is it better to return fire from where you are, or is it better to, you know, to get to a piece of cover and return fire from behind that piece of cover? Now, in some situations, you may have somebody that's just like two or three feet in front of you, okay? In which case, you, I definitely don't have time to run behind that tree if I've got somebody with a knife or a gun two or three feet in front of me. So the better option there would be for me to move, okay? Uh, just moving from here to here, okay? I'm basically getting off the X. They expect me to be here by me moving here, I'm taking back initiative. So if you think about it, somebody, let's say, coming in to stab you, right? Right? If you if you consider how, you know, it's kind of like, for example, if you're trying to nail, hit a hit, hit a nail with a hammer, the nail generally has to be still. If, if you start moving the nail around, it's, it's kind of hard to hit it with the hammer. So I'm basically moving myself to make it a little bit harder to hit me. But aside from... Uh, moving myself, I'm also giving myself, I'm putting myself in a better legal position because the way a lawyer could use that is I attempted to retreat, okay? So whether I'm moving from, from here to here or from here to there, okay, uh, that's an attempt to retreat. Now, even if you're in a state like mine, right, Pennsylvania is a stand your ground state uh, where I don't have a duty to retreat. The attempt to retreat makes my defense a lot better, okay? Um, so it gives me a stronger defense. So uh, so the, the three things that I'm concerning myself here with, right? And the order can be, you know, these things can come in different orders, right? When, when, when it comes to reholstering, seek cover, right? Either before, during, after, um, retreat, all right? You know, because again, it make you, makes you harder to hit, but at the same time, Gives you a better legal defense, okay? Um, and observe, okay? If you notice, you know, I did the scan assess, but when I got over there behind a tree, you know, I, you want to keep observing. You want to stay alert. Uh, you, for one thing, you know, you want to you be able to know if police are arriving or if there's other people coming to the area. You want to know what's happening. So those are the things that you want to immediately be concerned with, okay? Get the gun back in the holster. Get some cover, okay, as soon as possible. Uh, retreat as soon as possible and observe and continue to observe, okay? Uh, let's talk about calling 911. When you call 911, uh, that presumably would be after I, I got behind a piece of cover, right? Um, you, wanna, you wanna basically uh, establish that you're the victim, okay? Uh, that's important. You, I mean, a lot of times people say, don't say anything, don't. You have to establish that you're the victim, okay? They, they gotta have some general idea of what happened and who you are, okay? And, and what role you're playing in this. 
something. So you have to establish that you're the victim. Uh, you know, you got to basically give the location that you're at and you want to give a self description. Okay, what do you look like? So when the police arrive at the scene, you know, they have some idea of what happened and who you are in relation to what happened. Okay, so, so, and, but you don't want to give 911 any more details. Um, you know, you may want to keep them on the phone. Let's say you put them on speaker, keep it in your pocket, but don't start blabbing up to them. Okay, because uh, in general, you don't want to make any statements. And remember, anything that goes through 911 is going to be recorded. Uh, don't make any statements because it's going to be misconstrued, right? You, you know, so that, this is not the time to make any statements. Uh, number three, preserving the evidence. Okay, the evidence that we're talking about here is the attacker's gun or knife, uh, your shell cases. Very important to, to understand is when when uh, emergency services, right, when, when the ambulance people come through uh, and if, you know, you defended yourself against that person and that person over there is now bleeding on the ground, they don't know what happened. They don't know if he's a good person or a bad person. You know, they see a, a person that's hurt, that's hurt they're going to rush over and they're going to try to treat him, right? So in the process, the evidence might be moved. So if there was a gun over there or a knife, that might be moved, kicked out of the way. Uh, your shell cases, right? And these things are important. Where his weapon is and where your shell cases drop is an indication of the distance between the two of you, okay? So, as far as your shell cases, uh, people, you know, emergency services or the ambulance people coming through, they might kick them around. Or if it's windy outside, the wind might also push them so that it's 100 feet away. Um, so, you have to be able to report to the police, um, you, know, you know, the evidence and if it was moved, okay? Because if you don't do it then and there, it's, you know, because those, those ambulance people, they're going to forget this information later on. So if they move the weapon, or if they, or 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 if the if it's windy now and your shell cases uh, got got blown a hundred feet that way, okay, the police need to put in their report that the evidence was moved. Okay, so this can't wait until later on. This has to this has to get reported now. You know, while you know you know because later on it's it, once things are moved, you know uh, this, this is all going to work against you. Okay, so preserve the evidence uh, and and then report any movement of the evidence. Number four, point out the witnesses. Okay, so while you, when you get behind cover and you're and you're observing, see where the witnesses are. You and basically you can't make a statement, right? But you can tell the police to that this person, that person, and that person saw what happened. That they should go talk to those people. Now, something that you can do to help yourself, right, is as the situation is developing, right, um, you can call out to that person to stop whatever he's doing. To get other people's attention. So in the second situation where I was, where I did the defensive shooting, you saw me yell to that person. I'll, I'll do it again so you guys can see. Yo, stop! Get back! Get back! Stop! 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 Yo! So me yelling to that person over there to stop doing what he's doing. Um, now. Maybe he'll listen to me. Maybe he won't. That's not so important. What is important is that that command, right, got other people's attention. And now other people saw that this person was maybe rushing at me, you know, or shoot or, or, or had, a, you know, pulled out a gun or whatever. But I, I got other people's attention to the situation as it developed. Because what I don't want to happen is, is you know, I have a person over there that's, that, that starts attacking at me. Right, and I go to defend myself, but from the perspective of the witnesses, all they all they hear is a bang, right, and then they see this person on the ground and me holding a gun. Okay, but they don't know what led up to that. So if I can draw other people's attention, all right, they can see that I'm getting away from that person. That that person is pursuing me, let's say, with a knife. Um, you know, so they can see all this stuff, right? So so I'm kind of creating my own witnesses. So I'm going to use my voice to bring other people's attention to the situation as, as it is developing so that later on for my defense, I will have witnesses, okay? So I'm kind of preparing my own witnesses. Um, so finally, shut up and lawyer up, okay? Um, you talk to any lawyer, they'll all tell you the same thing. Uh, you talk to any police officer, right? And they will tell you that their, their union, right? The police unions tell the 
police officer the same thing if a police officer is involved in the defensive shooting they are not to make a statement they're to call the union lawyer and usually at least a time period of 48 hours passes before police make a statement uh with regards to a police shooting okay so give yourself the same benefit uh that police give to themselves um now if you start talking to the police um it doesn't matter if the other person did a hundred things wrong okay if you did one tiny little thing wrong okay because that's fine fine that person did a hundred things wrong yes they're gonna charge him they're gonna arrest him they're gonna try him but if you did one tiny little thing wrong well they're also going to charge you for that one little thing that you did wrong okay um so so you don't want to make any statements and there's a good chance that if you start yapping you're, you're just going to make a mistake okay you're going to say things are just going to come out wrong you're going to say things in the in the wrong order um and here's the thing if you start talking you're going to make a statement there right that time a couple of days later um they're going to be called in to make another statement and what's going to happen is you, you might remember some things or you might forget certain things. And now you're going to have two statements that are not identical. Okay, so they're going to tell you, well, you got two statements here that are not identical. Were you lying to us then or are you lying to us now? Okay, uh, so that's why you do not make statements. You, you talk to your lawyer and everything gets filtered through the lawyer. The, the lawyer is going to come up with a chronological report. He's going to, you know, he's going to talk to you. He's going to come up with a chronological report. And then only if it is in your benefit... Uh, is he gonna is he gonna talk to the police and submit this report? Okay, uh, because the information gathered from the vi from the witnesses might be enough, right? They they may not need a statement from you, so there's no reason for you to put yourself at additional risk. Okay, uh, if, if, if the information from the witnesses is enough, then that's it. It's enough. Okay, so that's why you talk to the lawyer. You do not talk to the police. Very important. I've done videos on this. It is legal for the police to lie to you, right? Uh, they call it. Um, deceptive interrogation and a good interrogator right uh is trained so that you're not going to know that you're being interrogated okay uh it's just going to seem like a friendly conversation to you uh but the, but but from the the police showing up to the crime scene you know they're there to you know to do a job okay and that job is to investigate crimes all crimes, including any crimes that you might have committed, okay? And they're pretty much showing up to the crime scene, uh, assuming that everybody on the scene, uh, ha ha, you know, might have committed some crime, okay? So do not talk to the police. Get yourself a lawyer. Uh, have a prepaid lawyer. Really important because what happens is if you if you get in a, if you get a self defense type of situation, the last thing you want to do, right? Especially if you end up being arrested, the last thing you want to do is call your wife or your mother up from jail. And tell her that to go find you a lawyer, right? Because if she now has to go lawyer shopping under these conditions, well, any lawyer that she goes to is going to ask her for a two thousand dollar retainer up front just to look at your case, okay? Uh, so it's going to and you, it's going to end up costing you a lot of money. So you got to have this sorted out in advance. Uh, and this is a, a a really great service, right? I've had these guys for about I think something like twelve years so far. Um, it's ten dollars a month. Right with the promo code, you get some some discount, some free months, or they waive some fees or whatever. Um, I, I mean, I don't even think that's the important part, but you know, I have the promo code for for you guys, so you guys will benefit from it. If the promo code is Pocono Shooting. Uh, the website is USShieldLawShield.com. Um, and what you want to do with this is because remember, if you if you end up being arrested, you're not gonna have their phone number and your account number with you. You want to, I mean, you're going to keep it in your wallet, but if you get arrested, they're going to take your wallet. They're going to take your cell phone. Uh, you want to have an envelope in your house, okay, uh, you know, with, with, your, with, with, the, with this card that has your account number. Uh, you know, and what you're going to do is you're going to call up your wife and your mother. You say, hey, go to this drawer. You're going to, because that's the only phone number you're going to remember, right? You're not going to remember any other phone number except your wife's or your mother's. So you're going you're gonna, to um, tell them to go to the drawer, find this envelope. It's got the lawyer's number with your account number. Uh, call them up and tell them that that you need immediate assistance and you know where you are so that's how that's how you can do it and again it is highly unlikely that any of us would ever be in a self-defense type of situation like that but you'll get a lot of use out of these guys uh, simply by asking them gun questions right specific specific to your state or if you're traveling around to different states you know asking them gun questions with regards to different states that you might not be as familiar with as your own state okay so in summary, I want to go back to, you know, this this time period, right, between this focal point 
between uh, when you deal with the attacker and you deal with the police. I mean, it's exactly that. It's a focal point because there's three possible situations coming into this, right? Uh, you might be ambushed, right? Where you have no pr no chance to uh, to prepare mentally for it. Right? You come around the corner, all of a sudden you got somebody stabbing you. Uh, you might have a situation where you get lots of preparation, like somebody's breaking into your house, or you have like an active shooter type of situation that's progressing, that's already started. Right? So that's a situation where you know where you have preparation you know that you're very likely going to be using your gun for self-defense okay uh, but then you have the other one where there's escalation right when escalation you know you, you start off with arguing that maybe that goes to yelling and screaming uh, maybe that goes to, to, to hands right and then maybe that that progresses to weapon uh, people get into arguments every day I mean it normally doesn't move, go beyond uh, an argument it usually just stays at that level so that's why it's very hard to sometimes tell if you're in a situation that that might go from that might escalate past argument okay so regardless how you end up in the self-defense situation you know whether it's an ambush whether it's a situation that you prep for but you get some prep for or whether it's an escalation at the point where you deal with the attacker to the point that you deal with the police it's kind of all going to be the same right your interaction is going to be the same where you got to Get the gun in the holster as fast as possible. Call 911 and establish that you're the victim. Uh, preserve the evidence. Point out the witnesses. And shut up and lawyer up. Okay, so that's all going to be the same regardless of how you got there, right? And then on the on the back end of this, right, right, coming out of this focal point, uh, the possibilities are they're either going to arrest you and charge you immediately. They might, you know, uh, charge you a couple of days later. You know, they might come to your house with a warrant. Uh, there might be no charge, right? That's another possibility, right? Uh, or there might be like civil penalties, or they might try to just pull, take your carry permit, right? They might say that, hey, um, we don't have enough to charge you, but we don't trust you. We think that you use bad judgment, and we're going to use this to take your carry permit. So, um, and, and that that would also apply if you're like in a in a public argument type of situation, or if you get into a fist fight, you know, uh, somebody attacks you. Uh, because here's the thing, you can be... I mean, you can have a situation where you're arguing uh, that maybe escalates to a fist fight. Just because you're in a fist fight doesn't mean that it has to progress the gun, right? So if you're in a fist fight, keep it to, keep it a fist fight, right? Um, but the but but the police show up, um, and and you have you know uh, uh, chances are they're gonna arrest both of you. Uh, if you have a carry permit, they're gonna try and use this excuse to take away your carry permit. So you want to have a lawyer ready to be able to deal with that, okay? Um, so again, that promo code is Pocono Shooting for US Law Shield. I've done many videos on this uh, with good reason, okay? It's, it's important, you gotta have a lawyer in today's society. If you're in one of these uh, Democrat-run cities or Democrat-run states, important for you to realize that you are a political enemy, okay? If you have somebody that attacks you, it doesn't matter if they did a hundred things wrong. Okay? Yeah, they're going to be arrested. Uh, they, maybe they'll get charged. Maybe they'll get convicted. But they're not, that's not enough for them. Right? They're not interested in that person. They're interested in you because you're the political enemy. If you just did one tiny thing wrong, that's independent of all the other things that he did wrong. The one thing that you did wrong is the one thing or the two things that they're going to focus on. Uh, at the very least, they're gonna. At the very least, they're gonna try to use that to take your carry permit. Uh, if they can get a, a more serious conviction for that, they'll, they're gonna do it, right? Um, so, you know, some things for you guys to think about. Uh, again, five things to think about if you're in a self-defense type of situation. Get the gun back in the holster as fast as possible. Call 911. Establish that you're the victim. Preserve the evidence. Point out the witnesses to the police, and then shut up and lawyer up. Talk to y'all soon.